On the next Small Town series, we'll be going across the Lehigh River to Weisport, as Lehighton and Weisport are closely intertwined. This is Lehighton. Another canal town and an early industrialization town too. Let's go. Now let's go take a walk through the park and through the town so I can give you some history. Lehighton is a borough in Carbon County. It is located 77 miles north of Philadelphia and 54 miles south of Scranton. It's located just down the road from Munchunk, present day Jim Thorpe. The town of Lehighton is located on the banks of the winding Lehigh River along a portion of the peaceful DNL Trail. Due in part to water power from Lehigh River, Lehighton was an early center for U.S. industrialization. The Lehigh Valley Railroad was for years a major employer up until the post-World War II era when railroad and industry reconstruction led to job and population loss. Lehighton became an ideal place for early industry for two reasons, water power from the Lehigh River and the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Having a history that goes back 150 years puts any town on the map. So how did it get started? Well, it began with William Penn deeding 5,000 acres that the colony's founder granted to Adrian Verrosen, a Dutch resident of Rotterdam, Holland in 1682. Fast forward to 1735 when it ended up in the hands of the Furley family who by 1745 had sold it to Philadelphia merchant Edward Shippen. That September, Shippen turned it over to Charles Brockton, who was acting as an agent for the Moravian Church. One of the Moravian Church's outreach missions was the Indians of North America. In 1754, they opened a mission called Nattenhutton, Huts of Grace, on what became the southwestern part of Lehighton. Unfortunately, the next year, General Braddock's army was defeated near Pittsburgh and the whole frontier opened to Native American warfare. On the evening of November 24, 1755, Indians who were allied with the French staged a rage on the mission. It was a bloody event that ended with the mission being burned. When word of this event spread, Benjamin Franklin was sent by the colonial governor to gather up militia to restore order. Here, he established a simple wooden stockade called Fort Allen after William Allen, the future founder of Allentown, on the site of the present-day Weisport. By the time French and Indian War was over in 1759, it fell into ruin. Following the Revolution, a Colonel Jacob Wise came into the area. A Philadelphian and former quartermaster in Washington's army, he was the first one to discover and use the supply of anthracite coal that the region had in abundance. In 1794, Weiss and William Henry laid out the first streets of what could become Lehighton. A bridge was built across the Lehigh in 1804 at Weiss's Mill. A road was built from there by the Lehigh and Susquehanna Turnpike Company in 1809 and the first of a series of taverns opened up along the route. A tannery opened around 1820 and a store soon followed. But progress was slowed until the builders of the Lehigh Canal arrived in 1828-29. The canal was created by Mr. White and Mr. Hazard, two Philadelphian businessmen who wanted an easy and direct way to ship coal down to the homes and industries of the Quaker City. This caused a large influx of canal workers into the region. Their lives were rough and short under the hard working conditions. Alcohol was used to ease the pain. It always led to a great deal of drunkenness. At times, workers in Lehigh and nearby Munchunk, which is today Jim Thorpe, would engage in large-scale fistfights that became known as frolics. They were not so much given, however, to fighting amongst themselves as they were to wage a war against the Lehigh and laborers. Despite these problems, by 1829, the Lehigh Canal was built and its black diamonds were pouring down into the coal stoves and furnaces of Philadelphia. Lehighton was growing into the 1840s and 50s as churches, schools, and hotels all sprung up. The old rough edges were not quite so rough. 
and by 1843, Carbon County was created, and it was assumed that Bustlingly Heighton would be named the county seat. To say the decision to give that honor to Mung Chunk, present day Jim Thorpe, came as a surprise would be something of an understatement. And some people were even unkind enough to suggest that the fact that Asa Packer, then a leading figure in the canal industry and primary holder of Mung Chunk, real estate that stood to increase in value with the town getting the honor, might have played a role. This sparked a spirited debate over the next several decades that was finally sorted up decided in 1889 as Packer being already in his grave for 10 years. Another aspect of change came in the 1850s when the Lehigh Valley Railroad decided to establish its shops in Carbon County at what came to be known as Packerton after Acer Packer and specialized in the production of coal cars. In its heyday, it provided a great deal of employment to the region until slowly dying off in the mid-1970s. Today's Lee Heighton looks back at over 150 years of his historic past. We walked on this path over the Lehigh River to Weissport, and that's where we'll start on the next Small Town series. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe, and we can't wait to see you next time where we're in Weissport.